Who is that? Good evening. Welcome to Hartwood Turning in the Stable Studio. I've got my tea. Let's go over to the lathe and see what's happening tonight. Go there. Ah, it's good to be back with a decent picture. So let's have, first off, let's have a look and see who we've got in the background. It's a full house tonight, guys. I'm sorry, but it's a full house. Ta-da! Terry from TDA Turning, you know the noisy one. Hello, everybody. <laughs> we've got board. Pete from Trusted Trees, who's opened the first timing can. We've got uh, William Kenny. Cheers, everyone. Hi, everyone. Who's coming in to help us out and see how it goes. Before I don't know about the help it <laughs> <laughs> And we've got the lovely Joe, senior. Good evening. Of, of X Yorkshire grip fame. X. X. <laughs> just, just in case I happen to use some. Joe's Not famous here. anymore. Oh, so what's going on, guys? Of course yeah. you can, can sing. sing. If, if I use ah, Yorkshire Gret, you can sing in there. You'll knock yourself out, Joe. You oh, wait a minute. No, that's Thursday before when gets his ears. Harry Bartlett's in, Joe, so you can oh. sing. He swoons over that. Yeah, he does. I. <laughs> right, so get you in the background, and I'll have a look at this piece of time. Bye. <laughs> so, what have we got? We've got um, this piece of timber. Go to the overhead. We've got this lump of walnut. It's 12 inches. By four inches. It has a few bits of cracks and stuff in it. But I've, oh, I've dropped it already. <laughs> I've already been round it and filled in some of the bits with a little bit of super glue. Uh, there's a bit of a sort of funky patch there, which will disappear, I hope. So because it's four inches deep, 12 inches across, I felt I needed a, something more than just the, the ordinary. I normally use a faceplate ring, but I thought, hmm. Might need something a bit more than that. So we came up with this idea. We're going to use a faceplate ring that came with a lathe. Never been used. So we'll stick six 30 mil screws in here. If it comes off, you put the other four in. Six. And if it, if it works itself loose, we'll stick the other four in. It's right there. Well, let me just kind of line that up there as best I can. And we'll stick that in just kind of loose. And then go to the opposite side and do the same thing. Todd has pointed out that Brian needs an SK114, of course. Yeah. Who oh. pointed that out? You could have held that oh. in the morning. So now that these two are fixed, it's not going to move anywhere now. So we'll just draw the rest in. The only thing about using a big faceplate ring is that it kind of limits the size of um, <coughs> edge you have on your bow or rim you have on your bow. Oh, well, yeah. You're going to have edge. You're going to have an edge rim slimmer than that, aren't you? Yeah, it's got to be slimmer than that. Yeah. So just give you a quick tighten up. There we go. That's that in. Whack that on. What we'll do is we'll move the tool rest first out of the way. Um, don't ask me why I know how to do that. <laughs> Made the same mistake many a time. <laughs> Whack that on there and then suddenly discovered it's not going to move, eh? That can go on there. And the first thing we'll do is bring this around, I think. So we'll be needing the big tool rest. And it's pretty well pretty well round I have to say William made a good job of cutting this blank by the way was donated to the channel by William nice one William so, so it was, yeah. if it's not a very nice piece of wood it's William's fault <laughs> <laughs> well that could be the turner you know. <laughs> uh, like I was the day operator error mm. well I usually get the blame so well, you'll get something well, out of it well, well, yeah. I'll I be cut. fine so the intention is to get round this off and get into the bottom and make a tannin. So I'm going to use my half-inch bow gauge um, and just attack this once I get my face shield on. So face Would shield. Would you on. like me to read out who's in the chat yeah. once you've started, Brian? 
Yep, just turn the lathe down. Nice and slow. And turn it up, see what kind of speed I can manage. Susie done a shout out, she said, Ben, it's walnut. Yeah, what I should do, I should really bring the tailstock up, shouldn't I? It's always good you plan. Should. Just to advise you, JP, is give you a super chat for some strawberries. Ah, oh, jeez. Thanks, JP. You're five pound better off. Well, well you're a me. gentleman, JP. Thank you. Tail stock up, just to give it a little bit extra support while we turn this, and that should allow me to get more speed. That's a bit too much. Yeah, we can see that. <laughs> so that's about 640. Jump. And we'll just take a little cut off of this. Okay, then. Welcome, everybody. Um, it's not enough for better order, so and please bear with me, as usual. So, we have in the chat this evening, we've got Door 60, Richard Phelan, Jennifer's Craft and Creations, Michelle Oosby, Copper Owl Wood Turning, Weaval Tickles Turning, Ward Wilson, Chin Hurst, this is where we start jumping. Barry Chitty. Todd at Glencove Woodworks. Terry Bartlett. We have. Let's jump it again. David J. Heath. Brian Eltonero de Madeira. Oh, I've missed saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Norman Greenwell, Tony Smith, Todd at Glencove Woodworks, Kevin at Nine Care Creations, Susie Swiss Wood Turner, Pete from Twisted Trees. Hello, Pete. Hello, Joe. Barry's Wood Creations. I'm just going to take a little bit off this corner quickly. Whilst Joe's Jim, talking that. Sorry. James right, Crawford. But wood turnings by Barry. Oh, it's jumpy. We have Graham Hayne. Adam, I love wood turning. Fred Gilliver. A few people in here the, tonight. You can, you can see the dust coming off there, guys. That's kind of punky bit that's in there. Okay. SK Crafts. Good evening, Steve. Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Roy's the boy. AGK Woodworks. Woodwork Learner. JP Woodwork, Benjamin, Christine and Michael Hesseltine, we're getting towards the end here, and that's it as far as I know, it did Miss jump. Peter Kelly. Peter right. Kelly, Grandma Ruth, Grandma Ruth tubes in. Yeah, it, it had moved up on the uh, chat. It kept <laughs> jumping. So I was about to say, if anybody had missed, I do apologise. And we've got Mark, the gentleman, would turn her in as well at the end. Um, welcome, everyone. There we so go. Just kind of Grandma a, Ruth just tubes kind of... came with a question. She said, this may be a wild question, but has anyone who is allergic to nuts used walnut wood or any other nut wood and been okay? A walnut wood is one of those that you build up an, uh, an intolerance to. Mm -hmm. and it does give turners um, a very bright red rash on their arms if you use it too much. So it is a bit uh, not toxic as such, but irritant. So it's, it's it's lovely wood, but it can be a problem. So we've got a, we've got a, a real punky bit just here. And I'm not sure how far down it goes, but we'll take a little bit more out and we'll see what Get happens. your balance and get some speed up. You'll sort that out. Yeah. 
soak it with yeah, soak it with. Uh, and we've got lots of little cracks going across this way. I like some big things in. So we may just take another few cuts and then we'll do a bit of super glue maybe. But we seem to be getting, I'll take a bit more off the base. Yeah, get your balance, get that base right, get your tenon on there, don't worry about it. Yep. I'll come Douglas is in and I did miss him. Although I did, yeah. I did not see his name at all, so. Question <laughs> for Joe. Have you yeah. missed saying watch it Beckett? And will you be saying this soon again? Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, so today we work as in. Push my, my buttons. <laughs> yeah, give him a minute. Good He'll evening, say Jeff. something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he likes winding me up. No. Well, none yes. of us would do that, Josephine. Ah, oh, you know. He enjoys the pain, let's face it. He just like spends all year winding up to get the pain. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be November again. Okay. Yeah. It was November last year when we met up. It was. That's well, right, well, that's it was, yeah. It was, yeah. But we, um, we rearranged it, didn't we? Yeah. Yep. When they Where's that year gone? Well... <laughs> No, Steve's birthday. Oh, you weren't there, were you? No, Joe wasn't there for that. Covid, I had. You did? Yeah, I give it to Glenn as well. We had a brilliant time, by the way, Joe, just in case you didn't know. Yeah, thanks for that. That's all right. Worked good, wasn't it? It was brilliant. <laughs> all right. <laughs> the pair oh, of you. Oh, oh, you, you missed out. Again. Oh, well. Mister. That's the wrong oh, chisel. Go, Why well. am I using that chisel? We don't know. I have no idea either. I just picked it up. That was my three years ball, guys. I'm getting kind of beat up here a bit, so I'll just have a look at that and see why I'm getting beat up. Now, we're almost at the end of the punky bit here on the base. Let me go to that camera. So the punky bit kind of ends just about here. So we'll get a little bit further. That's a good shot. Mm, very good. Good camera shot. Brilliant. Pin sharp. Is walnut um, no, well known for sh blunting tools? It's very yeah. hard, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It is. <clears throat> it would actually field. be worse because it's got that bit of punky bit in here. It would be um, a difference in um, cutting resistance, so it will yeah. hurt the tool even more. I have to say that this tool actually feels blunt already, even though I sharpened it. So we'll give it a quick jump. Whew, it's warm. It should really turn the heater down. Let's go there and we'll sharpen this quickly. <laughs> so has anyone noticed Brian's new smock? That's his old smock. He's had that one ages. I've had it a while. It's just haven't used it very much. I've never seen it before. I know you haven't. He's been wearing boring smocks for a while. Yeah. Wait till Christmas comes, you'll have new ones, we need different ones. Uh, nice. There's no more new ones on order, so. In fact, I haven't spoken to my sister in an age, so. Oh, well. I suppose I should really, yeah. You should speak to her at least. Don't just say, hi, sis, how are you? Make me another smart, would you? Well, that's about <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> that's about some like, total of our conversations, yeah. You only want me for my smocks. <laughs> Smock of the week. Misha was put in there in a old front. I didn't hear that, Brian. <laughs> what? What did she not hear? Grandma Ruchu says we really missed you, Joe. Oh, that's kind. That's very kind. I didn't know you were shooting at her. <laughs> <laughs> ben so Jam. I never went back to the ball. Ben Jam is Brian says you need a smock advertising the Chuck Buddies. Mm, I'm to speed up a wee bit, I think. Good do. The Yorkshire Git is in. Good evening, Glenn. Hello, Glennis. Oh, Hi, Glenn. Hold on a minute. Just wait. Just stop. Cease, desist, halt. 
I'm just going to do something because uh, the Yorkshire Git had a little bit of a complaint earlier that I didn't share the, his uh, work. So this is the bowl that the Yorkshire Git and I turned. Both of us, we tag teamed it because it was a big piece of wood, 16 inch. Did he hold the camera? Of... Hmm? Did he hold the see? camera? No, he, uh, no. he did a whole lot of he did a whole lot of turning and gave me a did whole he? lot of advice when I was turning it. <laughs> So well, it's that's funny. really nice. It's got a low edge and a, a, a high Super edge. Job, that is. And it actually comes in over the top a little bit at this side. Can I turn that there? Can it comes in a little bit over the top? That's so stunning. It's a super, it's a super looking bit of wood. So that was the Yorkshire Git and I we did. We tagged him that when he was here. Lovely piece so, of wood. Yeah, yeah, there's your credit, Glenn. I hope you're pleased with that now. <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting any. You're not getting any royalties, man. But uh, no royalties, no. He doesn't know you right. did that, there, Brian, because he, he can't hear you. <laughs> oh, that's true. Of course, I forgot about that. So we've still got yeah. a bit of punkiness down here. So I'm going to take this, take this on in, and try and get a, to where I can get a tenon on this. Okay. Jack took Liverworks has joined us. Good evening. Good evening. Patient, isn't it? Green said it was a great day. Yeah. It was. We just got a bit of peace out in the out in the shed, and we had a bit of fun too. That's Steve SK Craft says uh, at the Yorkshire Good. Did you know you could turn, Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> right, I'm just going to take this tail stock away for a moment, just to mark a tenon. So lift this up so it's just above center. So it's when my calipers are on it, the center point is in the middle. And I use the, I put a bit of green tape on there to remind myself that that's the one that engages, this one doesn't. So we'll just turn, turn it upside down. Yeah. Well, I always use this point, this bit point in the wall, you see, so. Shut up, Pete. Okay, <laughs> just asking. <laughs> So just about there somewhere. For a large bowl. Uh, the yeah. gentleman would turn is that's saying... 50, that's, that's 58 mil. Do you do videos, Glyn? <laughs> See, this bowl would be fantastic in your new three-inch jewels if you had them. It would be if I had them, but I haven't got them yet. So we'll just... Uh, I thought you had, those... had five-inch jewels, big ones. I'm not putting the five-inch jewels on again. They're too big. I'm going to do it on the two inch jaws and uh, use the tailstock support as long as I can. So that's the tenon. I know it looks a bit small, but I've had a 12 inch bowl on here before. Yeah, I'd be fine. No, I'd be fine as well. Yeah, what did I do? Forgot to readjust the tool rest. Right there now. Make sure that's a nice grain starting to appear now. Yeah, it is, I. Elaine Probably Wallace says it's looking it good. Oh, no, Elaine's in. Uh oh. Mm. Hi, Elaine. That's my sister. Do you know he hasn't spoken to you for ages, sis? Oh, Terry. Don't start a war. Hello, Elaine. AGK Woodworks has said, well done on your return to live today, Terry. Oh, they want to see many much. more every, week, going, every single week for the next nine months. Yeah, well, I'm not sure that's weekend. what he said at all, Pete. I don't think he said Pete. that at all. Yeah, but my my screen's do... a little bit blurry, and sometimes the words don't come out quite the same as they're written. Pete's doing at least two a month now. He's cutting no, down. Right, so let's have a look at that Is tenon to dreams, make sure Terry? it's the correct size. I've heard a lot recently about making sure your tenon is correct. So I'm just going to make you sure. You get perfect is. diameter, then it grips all round the all round the jaws. Right. That's, that's the thing, you see. And the correct diameter for this chuck is 52 mil. And that is absolutely perfect. And it's a straight tannin. So what I will do is just make sure it's straight by using a... It is indeed. Well, that wasn't bad. I'll just give it a little touch up just in the bottom. Well, it'll be 51 mil then, wouldn't it? No, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just taking a little bit off the back end of it. Because the gouge goes in and kind of cuts at an, at kind of an angle. Square the outside off. edge is perfect, and I'm just squaring it off so that it's perfectly square. That should be better. So. Of course, Roy had to say it, didn't he? Roy said, Brian, you need a new smock. Elaine mm -hmm. said, 
There's one in the post. Oh, what do you like? What do you like? So that's the tenor sorted. So now we have to identify where the base is going to be. Uh, but I'm going to take a little bit more off the outside edge first to see what's happening there. Because this is the punky piece. We may have to lose quite a bit of that. Should be able to get another 200 RPM on it now, which will help with that. Yeah. So I'll just do a couple of pull cuts here just to smooth that off a bit. Thank you, Kev. 600, so let's... Ooh. 700 revs just. Which is probably big enough for a 12-inch bow. Yeah. Because any of you mathematicians out there will work out how fast the uh, hmm. outside edge is turning. There's a formula, but I can't remember it. Yeah, I have no idea either. All right, William, you know the formula? Circum <laughs> yeah, circumference yeah, speed. <laughs> It's about, they might know it. He's not a, a clue. About He's, three points or another times the... Um, yeah, sorry, times the radius or, or diameter. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, Kev got it very fast. Yeah, so. it's, it's, get, it's about to have something to do with pie, that's for sure. Jack of Leatherworks is asking if you've got any internet issues now, Brian. Nope. Warp speed now is like 700 down and 100 and 200 up or something like that. So the speed Super to my hub this morning was 924 meg down and 112 up. Yeah, I think that'll cope. That is still all very punky there, guys. Can you see that? Can't really see it, can you? Can't give it a shear cut. Yeah. Drop the handle right down and give it a shear cut. Yeah, and yeah. Really that's fine. Well, well, focus now. Does your finger now go into it? Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, like you see it breaking away. Yeah, you've got to cut, yeah, keep, you've got to cut through that. Make, make it yeah, a 10 inch pole. Oh, I don't want to make it a 10 inch pole. But well, it needs must. You can zoom fix, out. You can zoom fix out. it, but it will never be right. Zoom out, Brian. I'll zoom out again, sorry. Is so. that okay there? By the speed is him. He's actually saying also the formula is the formula written on the back of your badge, Terry. If it is, then it's not seen because the badge is sewn to the jacket. Oh, What's your shape, Brian? What you say? Pete? What's your shape? Yeah, no. If you cut down too far, mm. and you won't be able to recover the shape very easy. Well, I actually haven't decided on a shape yet, so. So I'll just take bits away at a time till we see where we're going. Grandma Ruth Tube says I need to cover April, June, and August, for Terry. It's all, it's all a big. Wow. There you go. Talk about getting booked in advance. If you know, well, she's got all booked. So we, yeah. We're off to Ireland well, one of those months. I think it might be. I'm not going to say yes outright because I said I'd cover him for a couple of weeks while he moved out. Seventeen months. months later, I was still doing it. <laughs> Yeah, don't ever say yes, Pete. Yeah, well, I didn't know I had to build a... the ball a wee bit. I didn't know I had to build a completely new workshop, Pete. And I wouldn't bring anything with me except the lathe. And I'd buy all new. Just rubbing it in now. You get some nice shavings off there now. Mm. Yeah, you yeah. look like you might be going through the punky yeah, bit now. So... The thing is, you can use hardener or super glue or whatever on a punky bit. But you'll know it's there, and uh, it will never look the same, is it? It's almost away there, so we'll just give it one more go. And if we have to take a bit more off the rim, that'll be fine. But we'll just reduce this a little bit more here. That's maybe better if you're on that camera for that. I'm just taking it down in steps. So all I'm doing is uh, putting my... The, the bevel's not actually rubbing currently, but it will be rubbing on that rim. So I'll rub it on the edge, so it's the very point of, the point of the bevel that's rubbing. And all I'm doing is I'm rotating my hips from left to right, so... 
Hips left, rotate right. Hips to the left, rotate right. Hips to the left and rotate right. So the tool is, piv is just pivoting on a, on a pivot point and taking a nice little cut. And then we can finish that just by... Adam suggested a push cut might help. Yeah, I just want to have a look at a pull cut there, just get rid of the ridges so they can do a push cut. I need to there we go. joined us. That's, that's about as good as that's going to get. There's a little soft bit still there, but it's pretty good up here. Oh, I don't know if I'll... We'll maybe do a little bit more and see. Taking another couple of passes. Yep, so I'm going to do. Good evening and welcome, Anita. Bring that in um, just a little bit further. We've always got a question. Go on ahead, Val. How did the punky phrase come about? In oh. reference to Johnny Rotten? Mm, don't think so. It could have been, uh, for all I know. I think, I think it was around been before been Johnny Rotten, though. Yeah, I think it's been in you for a long time. Ben says you can always do a Steve in sand with 40 grit for two hours. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> you wouldn't need to because you listen to me and you got yourself a bigger uh, sanding arbor. One of these, Pete. Yep, one of those. Three inch one. I just happened to have that to hand in case Pete mentioned it. Read him like a book. Can you guys see that cut all right, right? Perfectly. Yeah, it's spot on. Unless you want to Adam use your new, new PC camera. arrived today, and he's reinstalling OBS and cams. Nice. I can try this. Camera, Brian. I could, I could try this just for the fun of it, just to see if we can get this to work. Try this. Better. Oh yeah. That looks good. So that's my eye view you're seeing there now. That's what I can see. I think we're going to have a look at that now. I think you might have to take the rim down slightly. Well, the rim is actually okay. Oh, there's a wee, oh, it's still a little punky bit just there. The rim may be okay, but it's out of shape. The shape. I wonder could I live with that. I know you want it to be 12 inches diameter, but much better if it's... No, if it's 11 and a half or 11, not more. See, there's still little punky bits just here. Jack Dump Leatherworks wants to know if you were in the Royal Marines. No. Nope. Don't tell him, Pike. <laughs> it's good everywhere else. Douglas Mungham's in. Just that Douglas. one little piece here now. Hi, Douglas. Evening, Douglas. Go for your final shape, Brian, and I think maybe you might turn it away. Yeah. Anything that's left, you'll just have to deal with. Mm. Yeah, there's a little bit left. Then it's, um, Let me just take a little bit more. Let me just bring the rim down by a quarter of an inch or so. Bring that out. Turn that right there. I'll just bring the rim down a bit. Anthony Green's in the chat. I just bought a two inch hole punch to hammer out sandpaper this. It arrived today and I'm very impressed with it. Nice. Marcus saying he's waiting until you got the, to do the rim from the other side, but well, I just brought it down a bit. I just brought it down a bit down there. Yeah, I think I think you need to sort of get your get your shape from this side and then see what the wood's like. Mm. Wesley Hammer is in. Wesley. Mm -hmm. 
Leslie. I hate myself Leslie. Leslie. Is that punky bit in the middle? You could always go OG. Yeah. Yep. And that's good. If it's, if it's too bad, you may have avocado bathroom little statement, but you know. Painted green, avocado. Avocado. <laughs> oh yeah, that. No, that's Ballad. okay. That's just that's that's not that's just uh, that's just torn green. That well, push That's just tear out, yeah. No, the punky bit is gone. Oh, that's right. That looks good now. No, yeah, it's just right. a, a light there. It's there. A little bit. Yeah, not too much. Was you, it? Could, you, you could live with it. Again, you get a couple of finished cuts on that. Maybe it might come away. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good. That's a good enough foot, I think. I may just. Uh, yeah, do something with that foot a little bit. So use my three eight skate pool, guys. Just a. I may have to take a bit of that tenon now, maybe a shade long. Is it, it's not punky there, is it, where you're turning now? It is not, no. No, that's okay. So that'll be fine there. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a foot on it there, just where it is. Keeping the handle nice and low. YouTube cup. You can see the reflection of the tool on the wood. Can start to see the reflection of the tool on the wood there. And that's kind of got rid of most of the punky stuff. Got some nice tool marks in down the bottom there. Some nice grain oh, in there. That was a nice stroke. Nice stroke, Brian, with the tool. Thank you, mate. Thank you. I'm just wondering, can I get that little 10 mil in there and just do a little cut in the bottom just to get rid of those little Two months. I know it's cutting it the wrong way and everything, but mm -hmm. OG, OG it. Mm. Ben Lucas style. It's all flows all over all the way through it then. No, I was thinking of having this little raised foot so as I could Let me just have a look at that. Actually, I see. I quite, I quite. I'm going to bring that overhead on. Just shove it over there. And yeah. I quite. I, I actually like that shape. That's not bad. That's nice. It, it kind of comes up and then actually yeah. sweeps, almost sweeps back over on itself a little bit. We'll lose a little bit of that, but yeah. I think what I'll do is I'll do what Glenn Lucas does and do a shear scrape all the way across this. No, I will not. No, I will not. Right. Andrew because that, asking, when I did that last time, it kind of pulled yeah, all the grain up. Right. You had this. Yeah. That's a nice cut there. That was sand up lovely. Do you know what I would do? What, man? I'd repeat the cut you just did, but about half half the quantity, or less than half the quantity. Go for a three quarters of a millimeter cut. Okay. Have you a fresh edge on that you have? I'm going to put a fresh edge on it now. Oh, yeah. I was just yeah. thinking about doing that exact thing. So we'll go back to the sharpener. Uh, Andy, JK Woodworks wants to know what camera is that you're using? That, that, uh, which one? The one that's on now? Oh, oh, the, the one you were looking at. The finishing cut. Um, yeah, the finishing cut one. This, this camera. Let me just show you this camera there. That camera. That's, yep. that's, that's a Logitech yeah. Brio. I'm going to try and do it again now. Just there. I'll just take real on our gooseneck arm so we can get it yep. in close. I'll show you. I'll show you the setup for it. Just well before. I'll just sharpen this first, and then I'll show you the setup for that. Just check that again. It's fine. Brian. Yes, man. Oh, wrong camera. That was actually um four minutes late. Timer. 
watching the screen. The number two timer. Uh, you mean I kept your attention, Pete, and kept you off the drink? Yeah, yeah, oh my God. Like what happened there? <laughs> That'll be a first. Well, just to let you know then, Brian Kev, a K9 retired maths teacher, uh, uh -huh. say, says that at 1,000 RPM, that rim is spinning at 35.7 miles an hour, or wow. 16 wow. meters a second. Well, there you go, eh? There you go. That's what we said earlier, fast. Yeah, fast, yeah. <laughs> They're breaking the law there. 30 miles and Jamie wants to know if we should all stop for a five-minute break now so Brian can get a cup of tea. <laughs> well, so we can get a cup of tea and Brian can hoover up. Brian, Brian's got a cup of tea. You work away. Yeah, Brian made me hoover my workshop just at Earworm tonight. I did. He wasn't allowed in until he tidied his shop up because it was a no disgrace. Way. Shaved everywhere. Um, I walked out of mine lunchtime after I finished, and I'm back in since. So. Yeah, but I, you have an excuse, Terry. You have a bad bite. Pete has no excuse. I'll do it more. No, he hasn't. So let's go to this. Let's go to this camera. It's a little bit slow to come on that camera, Pete. Is there any reason for that? Uh, double check the speed in OBS. I think I sorted them all out, but if it's coming in at 60, it's then got to slow down. So double check that. So that's up to 800 revs, so I'm just going to take it from about here somewhere and just take a little light cut. Very light feather cut. Handle as low as I can get it. Don't rush it. I'm, I'm not pushing, the, pushing it into the wood at all. I'm just letting the tool do the work. And now I can get the tool braced against my leg again. I can just lightly bring that round. And I'm now I'm transferring my weight from my right leg onto my left leg. I'm bringing the tool round. Don't rush, Brian, don't rush. Don't overstretch either. You can always move the rest and yourself. Should be able to get all the way around, Derek. You get there. So slow down right towards the end. Neil M has just joined us while you're doing that. Hello, Neil. And your tool should just roll off the end. And I didn't want to right. interrupt you, but Roy's asked, what are those spindle blanks for? <laughs> uh, spindle blanks? What spindle blanks? Right. So I'll just show you the setup of this, this uh, camera just well. After I took that cut, I'm quite happy with that cut, that'll do. So if I lift this camera up a little bit, there, go to the move cam. So there's that camera. Andrew, give, give me a shout on Facebook and we can we can go through settings. There is the camera. There's the camera there, look. And it's on this gooseneck, which goes all the way across here. And it's just on a, like on a, on a shelf bracket or a desk bracket there. And then it's just wired straight into the computer then. So the whole thing looks like that. But it gives a really nice view of the of the piece when you go back to this camera. It gives you a really nice close-up view of the and you can move it around to, to, to it suits. And the other thing, I seen this uh in the 360 club the other day. Hmm. And when you're doing the doing hollowing, you can get it right down into the Right down in there. So if you imagine I was hollowing that, you can. And it's not in the way of your tool either. So you can get your tool right in there. So that's the new camera setup. Brian Green and Mark Whittington are in. Hi, Brian. Hi, Mark. Evening. Welcome along. Mark Whittington's a new name for me, is it? Right, so we're standing this now, guys. So we'll take the tool rest off. We'll move this Did camera you? out the way. Did we say hello to Neil M? Yeah, you're still on that camera, Brian, so you want to change oh, it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> you, before Jeez, you uh, go into sanding mode, oh, can we do a finishing cut on that foot? Yeah, I think I might. I think I might, Peter. It's a bit, it's a bit rough looking, isn't it? Is yeah. It? Well, I'll be, I'll be finishing the foot anyway, because when I reverse mount it, oh, yeah. to take it uh, off, I'll be finishing it. But I'll, I'll do a bit of a cut on it now, just to make it look better. 
And I might have to reduce the size of that tenon so you get absolutely 100% right. Because you're getting too deep now for my jaws. Yeah. So we'll do this first don't and then we'll take it. You don't even want it bottoming out. No. So if I just take a little cut off of there. Oop. On there. A bit bigger cut, maybe. No. Alton Moore is in. Hello, Alton. Good evening, Alton. I've heard from you for a while. Rex B is in. Hey, Rex B. What is Glenn laughing at in the background? I have no idea. Yeah. What's he saying? <laughs> well, you said I'll take a little cut off here and went, chunk. Oh, and I said maybe a bigger cut then. Huh? No, in actual fact, what happens is they, 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 uh, I didn't have the, the tool rest and it kind of wobbled a wee bit. That's, that was what happened. I didn't touch the wood. The tool rest wasn't locked down. The banjo. I'll do. Yeah, I do that all the time. Oh, Sunday. That's okay. Now, we all. Thing is, I need to know how deep that ten is to see how much I take. Going to take off it. So we'll just measure it. It needs to be eight mil, and it's nine and a half. So we'll just take that away quickly. Slide that in there. Lift that up a little bit, and we'll just take a mil or two off of this. It should be good. And this is where we hope the screws hold, eh? Yeah, well, they won't know. They would have given when you were going out the outside, wouldn't they? Yeah. Don't well, forget to mark a... the centre again with, yeah, with the centre. And Roy's the boy who's trying to poach your soloist. <laughs> is he? Yeah. I poach my soloist. Your soloist. Your, 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 oh, your, your yeah. Elaine. He said... What material do you use for Brian's smock? You might have a few, uh, yeah, see, few yeah, orders. Yeah. No, he won't do you one. Brian's only. Sorry, so Roy. That's okay. We'll just give that a little push that back in and just mark the centre. That'll do. That's not very tidy looking in there, so. We'll fix that with this. Use a 10 mil beating and bottom tool just to finish that edge off in here. Kevin Canine says, no betting about how many screws stay intact. Do you know what? I have never, ever broken a screw. Oh, I wish you hadn't said that, Pete. <laughs> yeah, it was me. Yeah, I wish you hadn't said that. Famous, famous last words. <laughs> I've bent right, a few. Sandy. I've bent a few screws yeah. with uh, big pieces of uh, wood. And I think bent. I've never broken one. I think we'll just power sand the outside. Save time. Apparently, Roy the, Roy the boy's wife is a sewist, so he, he's got his covered. Oh, that's so. And Elaine says she only uses 100% cotton. So there we she are. does. Because I did send her some polyether material and she was raging. <laughs> yeah, don't don't want to use that rubbish. You go that way. You guys on the correct camera there, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that's Perfect, good. Yeah. Now, for all the turners out there who would like custom made smocks, I suggest you make a few needle cases and cut the darning things, them egg shaped thingies. And a couple of other sewist type equipment, and give them as a gift to a local sewist. You can get all sorts of stuff made for that. Yeah, no, I have to bribe my sister with uh, bowls of fruit and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bribery works well with them. Christmas trees and snowmen, and things of that nature. I have a feeling Elaine might have something in mind. <laughs> Mark Harvey's uh, joined us. 
He said, hi all, I was just watching Terry's live from earlier. And Mrs. Oh, Dutton Ryan's. Well done, Mark. Well, I'm, I'm, right I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely. It was the right one, Mark. Gobsmacked. I can't believe that. Douglas Mungham's asking me why a Canabash hole bowl has that name. Um, it's Hawaiian in origin, so I don't really know. Calabash. Is Calabash, it, yeah. Is it, is, is it not something to do with a fruit? Um, yeah, I think it is a fruit. I think the Calabash fruit exists, and it's shaped on that basis, but it's Hawaiian, so. Well, they used to use the husk of the Calabash fruit for bowls. Yeah. That's the idea. I think that's the, I think that's the right story, I know. Rex B is asking, oh. what's the size of your dust hood and does it work well? What's the size of my dust, dust hood. hood? The dust hood? Um, eight before or something. It's not working very well tonight. But I'll tell you what. Mine's tell you a what, smaller one. It's um, you switched on. It is on. 12 and a half but, inches wide. Right, man. And one and a quarter opening on it, inches. Um, this one is 10 inches by. Four and a half inches. Yeah, I went I went a bit smaller just to get more suction out the end of it, but um Yeah. That's what's pulling the dust in at the end of the day fun. too, isn't it? A couple of lots of splits there and there's that little punky bit that's left, but I don't think I can do anything with that. We'll just stick a bit of super glue in it. Yeah, if it's a little bit you can work with it. Just need a little bit more sanding down at the bottom here. Mark Harvey is really pleased he's got in time for Joe's singing. <laughs> As is Glenn, he's he's waiting expectantly for that. Yeah, Glenn's waiting with bated breath, isn't he? Oh, he sure is. And he's got the tenders at the ready. <clears throat> Robert Copperhall says that the, they're made to resemble gourds, so presumably the calabash is a gourd of some sort. Yep. That's good. I like the shape, and it's, it's a fun thing to cut. Some beautiful grain. Isn't it? There is. So just running my fingers over it there, guys. And the reason I was running my fingers up down here is because I, I thought I felt a little bump in it. And I'm just kind of working on that to try and get rid of it. There's a tiny little bump just here. Just about there somewhere. Concentrate on that for a second and then do all the way up. I'm using the, using the disc just like a cutting tool. Kind of holding on to it. Working my way up there, that'll do. So that was 80 grit. It's all, all the tool marks and everything is out of it now. Gonna speed down a little bit. Kevin Canine Creations has said, I noticed as soon as you reduce the hose size, you reduce the suction. Found that out reducing from four, four inch to one and a half inch. Now that does depend on your system. I use um, a chip extractor, which is a high volume, low low pressure. Oops. Um, and that, yeah, if you reduce the hose size, it, it reduces its um, power, suction power. If you use a vacuum as opposed to a chip extractor, which is a low volume, high pressure, then reducing the hose size can increase the suction. Grandma Reef Tube wants to know, Brian, do you know all the breeds of dogs on your jacket? Uh, no. I want to make stuff using Aston, I mean. Aston. Even me. Believe me, Aston. Elena said, I own brew fabric. We'll have to try and force it. Ooh. No. I have a friend of mine who uh, who works in the film industry. She's a wardrobe mistress, oh. and she she has she has uh, produced a fabric with Hartwood Dunning logo on it. 
Aha. Get on. Um, which she made into little bags for me. Little drawstring bags. For giving away. So when you, if you buy a bowl from me, it comes in a hardwood turning ba uh, bag. Fabulous. I've got Good one plan. of those bags. You have indeed, Joe. So Brilliant. don't all rush to buy a bowl off me now because I haven't got them yet. <laughs> still here. I'm still waiting on them. She's making them. She sent me samples. I can still see. So, um, sound of are you going to have them in time to um, put your auction bowl in one for? for I hope so. Yeah. And on that subject, at the top of the um, chat, there's a GoFundMe link. Um, this is for Steve at SK Crafts. Um, Makers auction, and the link is up already um, because you can buy raffle tickets now. Raffle yeah, tickets please. are um, two pounds each. Quid each. Two you pounds can each. Buy as many as you want, and you have to at the moment message Steve with what those raffle tickets, which raffle those tickets are for. I think it's four or five prizes, so you have to specify which one you want your tickets to go into the raffle. There are four prizes, and there's a little video on the video I posted last night, and there's a video on Steve's channel as well. But the video I posted last night gives you all the details on how to uh, how to enter the the raffle. It's in the intro of my video from last night. So if you want to have a look at that, you can pop over and check that out. The links to the GoFundMe page and stuff are in there as well, and it's on the top of this chat. So please go and buy some raffle tickets, guys. The four nice prizes in there. Or if uh, you want to spend some real money, you want to spend some real money, join the auction and bid on an article. Would you fancy? Well, everybody in the chat is going to join the auction anyway. They're all going to be there. But you could just actually donate if you're not worried that's, about raffles. That's starting, you starting could to look just much donate better now, guys. a couple of pounds. Mark has suggested, if you can still see Mark, Brian, yeah. Spray it with mess and go back a grit. Spray it with mess to get the dust out of it and then go back a grit. Okay, we'll give that a go. Because uh, there are places, it looks fine here, but just over here, it looks like there's little bits of sanding marks. And also Did remember you... from uh, Glenn Lucas, sometimes a fresh pad of the same grit will have yeah. a good effect. Better effect. There you that go. just shows that. what it's going to look like when it's polished up. Oh, that. that is a good piece. That is timber. absolutely gorgeous. Uh, well, you can see there's a whole lot of sand or dust in that. So we'll just give it a good rub, get rid of it as much as possible. Oops. There you go. It's kind of brown. So like removed a whole lot of the dust. Just give that sink to flash off and we'll stick a new a new bit of this is 240 grit we're using. So we'll stick a new bit of 240 grit on and we'll see if that does it. There's a whole lot of shit. See this but this piece of wood here? Mm. Almost looks like a feather and it, it, it's absolutely stunning in there. The chatoyance is in that. And that little punky bit there, there's a little dip in there where the punky bit is. So we'll just wait a second for that to dry off. You can see where it's on the hard piece that, that it didn't soak in at all hardly. And it's dry already. But where it's kind of punky, it has soaked in a bit. I could do what Jimmy Clues does and set fire to it, I suppose, couldn't I? You could. Yeah, no. I don't, think I, I don't think I will. We'll give it a go now. No, we knew you'd burn your hand or the workshop. Yeah, probably. I'm not good with fire, sure I'm not. <laughs> that piece of wood, Brian, was, was lying on the ground for about three years before it was ah, cut. That, that's, that's why, why it's the got funky a... bit... It's just that's on one. It's it's just on yeah. one side, yeah. It's just on the one piece. That'll be the bit that's lying on the ground, then. Yeah. It's fine, though. 
It's actually coming nicely there. It'll, I'm going to put a little bit of super glue in that, I think. And maybe do that from the inside though, and let it come out. I think we'll. I think that's good enough. That actually worked a treat, Mark. Thanks for that tip. That was excellent. That, that has made a huge difference to that. Just a little bit of sanding lines there. So one more little pass. Mark said oh, not to use one eighty or not then. Well, <laughs> one eighty. Well, well, I, I just mean, I, put a, I did what Pete said and put a fresh piece of the. Well, maybe you should go back to 180. Well, Glenn said you got tool marks all over the place, but he always says that anyway. So. He, he does, I, I, never, I never listen to what Glenn says now. He can't hear you anyway, don't worry. 180 grit, you reckon, Mark? I'm just Let's pasting a link to the um, the raffle video. Good man, Pete. Thank uh, you. Maybe he hasn't seen it. How are we doing? Nine o'clock? Yeah. It's nine. Five minutes yet. Yep. Yeah. But don't forget, you've only got two cans left. Well, you probably got, yeah, two cans, because he's probably at the end of the second can. Um, no, I'm actually drinking quite slow tonight. You go. Mm. I suppose the obvious question next, Brian, is are you going to colour it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ben's going to ask, or somebody, isn't he? I'm oh, going to no. colour it purple. Ben's saying, why aren't you using a three-inch arbor? Because it doesn't need a three-inch arbor. I'd only use a three-inch arbor on this if it was on the first grit. Um, and that's just to give you the, the advantage of the footprint of the, of the arbor on the bowl. That's because it's a large bowl. Oh, Fred Gilliver is saying Hermes, i.e. I, I, every, it's called now, was featured yeah. on the Rip Off Britain TV this morning. Yeah, the worst not, not company for losing parcels in the UK. Yeah. Yeah, I've lost several already. Yeah, but of course, they, don't, they don't exist anymore, so that's not a problem. Every I've seen does a program. Company. Every does same company. Just but they just rewrite yeah, it. Change the name. It's just change the name. And, and, guilty. And and every uh, are actually a holding company for somebody else. <laughs> two forty new piece of two forty I ordered two hundred meters of. Uh, Internet cable, and they they said it was delivered after the eighth time. I was away in France on holiday. And when I come back, they said it's delivered. I said it was not in my house. <laughs> Turns out it went back to the company I bought it off. Yeah, I, I used them to send a parcel up to Wayne recently, and that's given them a good kick in to get it delivered. So there was one of those kind of expose programs, you know, like Panorama or some of them things. Yeah, it is, yeah. Rip they off they did a whole thing of... Uh, well, that, that, that's enough, I'm going to stop sanding that now. They did a whole thing on um, Hermes, and it turns out that there's a warehouse somewhere that are selling pallet loads of um, undelivered Hermes goods. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Amazon, yeah. It wasn't I don't think it was Amazon. No, you can get the the Amazon packages um, right. off a company that buys the lot and then resells them. If you can get them for, you just you just specify under pounds worth, and they give you like six hundred pounds worth. But it may it might be six hundred pounds worth of baby no, this, this, yeah. yeah, this thing was uh, was kind of geared towards Hermes. It's all about Hermes because their stuff just goes uh. back to this warehouse and then gets dumped out to that retailer. It's like an auction house, if you like. Yes, yeah. sir. The thing is, when 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 come, sorry, sorry, William, is he? No, I was just saying the wood dude has just joined us. Good evening, Brian, and everyone. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Stephen. Stephen. Good evening. Oh. Well, in your honour and the fact that it is um, nine o'clock, is it? I will oh, open no, another no. can of tea. Not no, another can of tea. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I just thought I'd put that there just to give you a little bit of warning, guys. Joe's ah. going to sing. It's a two-minute warning. Joe's going to sing once he's sanding sealers. Well, I have to do sanding sealers first, though. Joe, okay. would you like to mute yourself for a moment and practice and do your warm-up so Glyn can enjoy it before you actually sing to the Wait. rest of us? I think that's a great no, idea. I could do. 
Yeah. If you go I'll close to him and sing loud, because he hasn't got his ear in age yet. Yeah, you can sing it three or four times, just to warm up. Just while I'm applying a standing seal, <laughs> I think, here, you know, just to... All right, I'll mute myself. Not that Ward I'm trying Wilson to wing Glenn up any other anything. Ward Wilson yeah, says you've got plenty welcome. of time, Brian. It's only one o'clock where he lives. Ah, thanks, Ward. One o'clock in the afternoon or one o'clock in the morning? <laughs> afternoon. That's we got He's in Arizona, time. isn't he? Ward, all the mm. way from Arizona. I went to Arizona once. Desert. I don't think I've been to Arizona. Oh, there's lots of... It was hot, I'll tell you that. Mm. Douglas in. says he has his earplugs in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Paul Finley has just joined. They're not very nice to poor Joe. I think Paul might have been in earlier. Uh, Paul's in there again. again. Oh, he was. Yeah. Nice. I think he'd probably come back in and disappeared. Went out. Got his weekly shop. Had tea. What are you trying to say, Terry? Not that you're taking too long, Brian, but no. It's lovely, mate. I've got to tell you, I'm not rushing this because this is too nice a piece of wood to rush. Yeah. If I get to half past yeah. nine, it's not finished. It's not finished. I don't care. That's fine by me. We do have so a, a, nice, a nice finished piece rather than a half finished. Rex B's got a question. He said, will standing sealer stop cracking? Absolutely uh, not. No. 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 It can. It can sometimes slow down the drying so on a wet piece of wood by slowing it down you can have uh, let it work its own stresses out and not crack as much but no nah. this piece of wood this is an absolutely stunning piece of wood and i'm actually putting a little bit more sanding sealer in this yeah, packet, but... feed it a bit more up. yeah feed it yeah. Just, it flood to help it it will, it will stiffen up the fibres a little bit. Michelle Oosby says she's just opened a can of tea. Well, have she That's... now? <laughs> where, where what I Michelle? want to know is, where did she get the can of tea from? Probably your side of the fridge. Uh, no. I no, Brian, Brian drank his last Doom bar last night. And, and I'm heartbroken because it went up by £3 a case. <laughs> right, uh, that, should, that should be enough sanding so that I think. I'll make sure we've got extra time right. this time, Brian. Good man. And I kicked my brother out, so he won't drink it all. That'd be fine. I haven't really kicked him out. He just found some rough yeah. There was a question right. there with Rex B. Um, what, what do you use to stop cracking? Uh, mostly CA, CA glue. Yeah. If I've got that, uh, uh, there are a couple of cracks in this, well, there was. They seem to have all disappeared. I seem to have cut my way through them. But there were a couple you, of... Or you probably, you probably rubbed the dust in with the sanding sealer and there it There's sealed it. a crack just there. <clears throat> okay, now, to, to stop cracking... Um, I'm not, not going to leave there cracks. That's, it's actually impossible, but to reduce the chance of cracking, coarse horn timber is always a good bet. Yep. Um, slowly and carefully seasoned over a good length of time so it was nice and dry. Um, however, for wood turning, we were discussing this the other night. If you turn really dry timber, it's very stable, it's all very, very good, but it's not that much fun. No, no, it's you not. Don't get, you don't get the fun shavings off of really dry timber. So I just denibbed that with a bit of cloth there just to make sure it was kind of dried off and stuff. Doug Miller's Doug in. Miller's in. Got to take and a risk and, and no, no, no. aim yeah, to cut it in such sorry, a wall, wall thickness that it will not crack. So keep your wall thickness even all the way around. So a little coat of Yorkshire Grit. You're dead right, Mark. Yeah, there's a ring shake. Yeah. That is a ring shake, this one here, yeah. Which is probably caused either when the tree fell or it was caught in a violent storm and it broke one of the rings. Yeah, mostly storm damage. That's yep. what's, what happens is it's what's called a contortion. It's a, when the wind twists the tree. All that's right. what mostly causes ring shakes. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is if you get a tree that's felled as a whole tree or dropped from a great height, you'll get a, a ring shake in the middle of it that uh, is invisible from the outside because the crack is entirely inside. Yeah, it just, it just travels around. So that one there just travels right around the growth ring. 
Yeah. It probably went right round the whole branch tree. Well, it actually it's just it stops there. Oh. And it goes all the way around to there. So it's I just a small one. In. There we go. That's Lovely my cool. glide. You might have to treat that crack, Brian, on the inside so the piece doesn't uh, fly out. I, I'm thinking I'm thinking about doing that on the inside. Once I start the cut, it will yeah. we'll drizzle some seed. Yeah, see what it's like. You ready, Joe? Ready, Joe? Seen... Mute, everybody. Those that don't want to listen, mute. Ah. That's, Becky, that's I'm going to sort you out. <laughs> Mark says mute. You let the dogs out. So I'll just turn the speed down to about five. Before you think, can you just do the Beckett thing? Yeah. Shut it, Beckett. That's well, it. <laughs> so speed it around 500. For those of you who don't know how to use your regret, I'm sure everybody else is ready, ready, Joe. Are you ready, Joe? 400, five, between four and five hundred. Go, 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 go. Hands up, feel pity, you can be soft as your face. We've light brown, Yorkshire gritty. Ooh. There we go. It's actually a while since I've heard that. Good on you, Joe. Well, we're joined by William Kenny from Ireland tonight. Um, oh, yes, sir. He's got his own video channel. Um, William, you've got a spanner, you can chuck your link in. Oh, sorry, mate, I don't. Oh, oh yeah, Brian, uh, for some in, for, say something, William, and then uh, in the chat, and Brian file. will spanner you up, and you can put your link in. Wow, chat's away mad there. William also <laughs> um, supplied this piece of wood to Brian, so. Yep. He did. I'm just, I'm just trying to find William if he sticks or something. He's just going to put someone in now to say, hi, everybody. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, if I go there, <coughs> click that button, and add as moderator. Right, there you go, William. No, just now a moderator for my channel. Say hi again, William, just to check. Is you got it? Should come up blue then. And Jennifer said, "Voice of an angel." I've missed your singing, Joe. No, I've missed singing it as well. Hello, oh, yeah. Zed. Zed's in. Oh, I, Zed. I, I have have it now that even. <laughs> Even when YouTube's got nothing to do with it, I always message Joe when I'm about to use your chagrin. All right, William, now you, now you can, can put your it. links in if you want to, to your channel. <laughs> if I know how. Yeah, oh, right. Peep, subscribe. Subscribe. Just open your channel. Open your oh, channel, yeah. get your link to your channel, which will have a strange number on the end of it. Yeah. Um, copy ah, and yeah. paste it in. Copy and paste and then paste it into the chat. Paste. Yeah. So copy cool. and paste it in. People go over and see William's channel because he's good... Brilliant returner. He's got just over 100 subscribers now, so we, if we can boost him up a bit and get his yep, channel get growing, that'll go. be good. Let's not forget about the uh, charity raffle, raffle too, guys, which is coming up on the 21st. Yeah. So get your raffle yep. tickets, but only £2 to go. And there's some lovely prizes there. Let's get into that then. Yeah, if you're not interested in a raffle, it the, wouldn't hurt just to donate a couple of pounds. I wouldn't. Yeah, would we donate a couple of pounds because Ruth will win all the prizes anyway. She always does. Yeah, that's, Ruth won that's last year. Ruth won the she top did. prize. Well, a prize last year. She did. And then um, there's no Thank top you, prize. They're all equal. See, some people say that Ruth's really lucky, but actually it's just compensation. She married Terry. No. <laughs> this, this nature's she's way of compensating. Yeah. She's had 44 <laughs> years of conversation, Pete. 44 years of conversation. Yeah, yeah. she's heard a lot. <laughs> That's funny. Well done, Pete. Best thing is when she wins holidays. I love that. I love that when she does that. Quite often. Pete's got to work for it then. Right, too. Let the zombie yeah, returner has joined us. I'm going to Thanks, Monday, I got a 1% longevity pay, pay increase. Woohoo! I'm going to be called well old. I might as well get paid for it. Quite right. So I've just turned the speed up now to around well, 700 as fast as it'll go. And we're just going to buff this off a little bit so it's clean. So my cloth is clean coming off. And we'll Rex have a look at the Rex is the end and prizes given out, please. Rex, this is going to be for the Makers Auction on the 21st of the month. Correct. They'll be drawn that night. Drawn that night. Yep. So, yep. on uh, if you win a Craft channel. If you win a prize, then you will get the link to who ha you will need the, to... The maker um, who supplied uh, Steve it. Steve will give, the, give your link, your name or whatever, or vice versa, to the maker who's 
donated the prize or not palette. necessarily make it could be any you know, the company that's donated the prize yeah for the the for the actual um draw prizes they'll probably be sent to you from the companies however if you win it an article in the auction you bid on it and win it then the postage is down to you and the person that's donated it to come to an agreement you may have to pay postage you may not um you will have to get in touch with them and then, then anybody who bids on my whether you're going to uh, pay postage or not. I have a piece donated, and anybody who bids on mine won't be charged postage. I will, I will foot the postage bill. And I have a piece on there, and if anybody wins it, if they think is even worth it, and they win it, it will be post free to anywhere. Okay. Joe, the there's a question there for you, please. Uh, is Yorkshire Grit a friction polish? No. Yorkshire Grit is not a polish. Abrasive. Yorkshire Grit is an, is an abrasive paste. Yeah. It's not a polish, but it does shine up a bit. As you'll see in a second, because that cloth is now coming off clean. That's just the beeswax in it, it's clean said. And it's just the beeswax in it, yeah. Yep. It's too soft Which to be, be a, a finish. soft finish. Yeah. There you go. Well, well, it lets you know what the piece is going to be like when it is really finished. Yep. So I'm going to use my standard finish over the top of Yorkshire Grit. <clears throat> and I use high, Hampshire Sheen High Gloss. And what it, what it um, was when Glim owned it. He gathered all the diamond engagement rings that were thrown into the bay at um, Scarborough. With his, yeah, with his and machine. Beep, 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 crushed beep, them beep. up. And the tears of rejection added to the <laughs> crushed diamond to create an abrasive paste of fantastic quality. What are you like? <laughs> and, uh, and basically, I, it's, uh, really it's a rotten stone which enough. breaks down from around about the 320 grit mark, which is why you stand to 240 before you start, to about a thousand grit mark. Um, and it breaks down as you use it. So it uh, continuously gives a sharp edge and it takes all the fine dust sanding out of the equation because it gathers yep. the dust as it breaks down. It binds into the dust, yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah, it I mean, is. I, I used it before I even met Glenn. Um, it's good stuff. So did I. Yeah. I'm loving this feathery bit here. Yeah. So you don't have to hand sand to until a thousand grit. You don't have to have a fine <laughs> dust in the room. So this this is now finished to a thousand grit. This piece. Uh, and if I was getting really fussy, you'd use I'd the other one. Up, I would use the microfine and take it up to about two thousand grit. But this will do for tonight. Zed's come back and says, so when Wen to the wood turner told me that your script was made from haggis spittle, that was not accurate. Uh, well, it no, could well be a blend of haggis spittle thing. and crushed diamond rings from rejected yeah. fiancés. Could well be that. Or it might not be. RPM Woodworks is in. Hi, Andrew. Is that Andrew, isn't it? Andrew, RPM? No, that's AG. Oh, yeah. I saw it as AGK, I'm sorry. Uh, does not the white go to five? Thousand grit? No, just two. Two. Two thousand grit, yeah. Yeah. And that white is ideal for resin. Apparently. And car headlights. And car headlights. And car headlights. headlights yeah. Yeah. Plastic headlights. And actually, the white is brilliant on you and other really hard timbers. Yep. Bruce. I think we're done. I think we're done. <laughs> That's we're lovely. Well, that's a that brilliant looks piece. Lovely. Go to the overhead. Stunning. Well done, Leif. And William probably wishes he didn't give it, you know. Yeah, I'll get it turned out. <laughs> there's got some lovely little bits here where there's been a, a branch growing out. It's actually opened up a wee bit. But it's actually very, very nice to look at. This bit is Douglas really got a special. Question. You, Joe. Joe, are you going to be making your in the UK? Oh, I'm afraid you're going to have to ask Easy Wood Tools. Uh, they are the current owners. Their plans are. I don't believe so at the moment, but um, they're the ones that ultimately own the company now. So. <sighs> Set that down on its bottom. On I, think its bottom. I think, Douglas, they're going to sell it in the Uk yes. through their dealers. 
Yeah. I would think through the deal on that one, it'll just be, know, I mean, it'll be available. The price is probably going to go up a bit because the American tax insist, you know, transportation back to here and all the rest of it. But now, Pete, it'll still be available, as you imagine. If any of these screws Christian break. Michael said that's gorgeous, Brian. It won't. You've got the right screws and you uh -huh. put them in properly, so they're fine. And I'm using an impact wrench to get them out, which gets, gets them started easier. I missed a question from Zed there. He said, what speed for Yorkshire gritting? Right, it's a paste. If you stick it on the piece of wood as a paste and you run the piece of wood at um, 2,000 RPM, it's not going to be any Yorkshire grit on the, on the piece of wood. It's going to be all over you. Yep. So turn the speed down to below 500 if you can. 500 is good enough. But 350, 400 is good to go for. So that the paste stays on the piece and start at that. When you've got it worked in, then bring it up to about a thousand RPM to finish it off. And working in, Pete, means three minutes. Three to five minutes, yep. That's yeah. what I do. Five minutes. You, you, can, you can actually feel, feel it breaking down. You can feel it break down. You can feel it get finer. And it's a bit of a knack, but you, you, you get to know how it works. And you can feel the effect of it. So on a smaller piece, then two minutes on an average bowl, three minutes on a bigger bowl, five minutes. Um, but you do it by feel. And then you continue with clean pieces of paper until it doesn't leave any marks on the paper after which it's ready for finishing. Yeah. And there's no dust. And there's no dust at all. That was the reason it was developed because Glenn was having trouble with the uh, dust and he was sanding up to, you know, up to a thousand using traditional sort of 400, 600, 800. The dust was kind of killing him basically. So he decided he had to do something about it and he did. And made a bloody good job of it too. So that's that. And you're gonna to have to bring this tailstock out a little bit. Let the tailstock slide out. Can we have a change of camera. Change the camera to there again. Oh, wrong one. This one. Oh, all right. <laughs> so but you there. could bring the other camera over ready, Brian, so that we can see the cut going down the inside of the bowl. I'm not swinging on. <clears throat> I might never get there at this rate. It's 20 past nine. Oh, no, right, you I, would, I would suggest now. you face this off mm -hmm. and then finish it on Thursday. Yeah. I think that's a cunning plan, Pete. Oh, you don't want to rush it, do you, really? No, I'm not rushing it. This, this is too good a piece of wood to be rushing now. So I'm just going to turn that on a bit slow. It's not, it's not too bad. The rim's not right. That's what makes it look like it's wobbling. That's making it. You face that off, you'll probably I'm find it correct. A three eights, I'm going to use my 3 8 bull gauge. Just make sure it's in the right place. That tool rest needs to come off a little bit. Got a tiny bit to be there somewhere. And we'll just have a question for you, Joe. How many tubs of Yorkshire grit do you think you have made? Well, he's asking Glenn, but you can answer. He says at least 11,000. 11,000. <laughs> oh, there's been thousands. Absolutely thousands. Millions. So I'm just thinking just think of all... speed nice and slowly. <coughs> just think of all the lungs that he's saved. And there's 760 revs, so that'll do for now. And I'll just do a little pull cut out here and see how we go on. Glenn's just said over 90,000 tins. Wow. That's a whole lot of tins. It is. Kevin Canine Creations says, well, Chestnut's cut, cut and paste does the same. Uh, no, it doesn't. No. It's not the same at all. I've used both, and yeah, it's cotton polish. I, I was using Yorkshire Grip before I even met Glenn, um, because it works. And so I've changed my mind. I'm doing a push cut instead. Why did you change your mind? Because it was bouncing too much, and I didn't have bevel supports yeah. the same. I've now yeah. got proper bevel support. 
Always go with a push coach. Just watch the start of it. That's the only problem. Zed saying he's never seen Yorkshire Grit in the US. Well, Zed, the US company, Easy Wood Tools, have just bought the company a while back. Easy Wood And they will be, be everywhere. distributing it all over the US. At the moment, well um, the Walnut Log, Jeff Honning, and uh, Wood World of Texas, is it, Joe? Yes. Yeah. Walnut Log or Wood yes. World of Texas are our well current suppliers. But there will be suppliers everywhere in the very near future. There's over there's right? over 200 um, dealers in America for Easy Wood Tools. And it'll be on the market very soon, you think? If it, if it isn't already. But my um, my biased opinion is get it. It doesn't. Yeah, just get a tub. One tub, once you use it, it says once on the tin, the and every time you open the tin, win -win. Joe sings to Glyn, so it's a win win. <laughs> yeah. If you put a video up and Glyn and Joe are watching the video, when she sings, that's all we need. Well, you don't even have to do that, just open the tin, it's enough to trigger it. Yeah, I think it may come with a ready made song. The lyrics are printed inside the lid, hopefully, by the time it gets redone. Odd says Easywood Tools website says YG is coming soon. It does. Ah. Well, they changed the name. Think it's the best thing since sliced bread. No, oh, that's kind of it to say. Yeah. Woodwork well, Learner that, says. Sliced bread's horrible. Yeah, Woodwork Learner says. Will, it, what, will they change the name? Of course, they nope. won't change the name. It's the name. Uh, world it's, famous. It's, it's the name they've bought. It is what it they, is. It's they bought the company, they want the Yorkshire Grit, and they want to keep the name. I would, I would assume. A little point in buying it and then changing the name, nobody knows what it is now. Roy's a boy saying, what's the shelf life of Yorkshire Grit? Glenn? Indefinite. 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 No shelf life. Never runs out. It's all natural product. Not unless you used it, of course. And Todd says, since it's been made in Lexington, Kentucky, they will need to add... A bourbon sent to it. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Mm. Or lemon. Can you imagine when you open it up? Oh, the smell. Oh, when you take the first spoonful, you realise it's not edible. <laughs> yeah, you, you may have just made a mistake by eating it. <laughs> but the good you thing is, it's not poisonous away. either. But don't be eating it. It's not. No, but you wear your teeth away spitting it out. Right, guys, there we go. I'm going to stop at that. It's 9.25. Fabulous. So that's it faced off, ready to start the hollow. And if you come back and see me on Thursday lunchtime, you'll see Give it being finished spray up. the mess just for the fun of it. Oh, okay. <sighs> demanding, demanding, demanding. You are. There you go. That's going to be Glenn nice. saying he's over there next week, everybody. Training easy. We're down to make it. So there you are. That's what it's going to look like. And uh, come back and see us on Thursday and we'll finish it off. Can't wait. I mean, I wow. can't wait to watch you on Thursday. Not that I can't wait for Glyn to I have to decide it, now. What I have to yeah, decide now is am I going to have a wide rim and do something with a rim with decoration or something? Or just leave it plain? Leave it plain. Uh, one leave inch rim. Get a piece of timber. The quarter inch and just take it a nice curve into the match. I would the say a half inch because of the size of the bowl. Proportionally, a half inch rim would look nice. <sighs> it's my opinion, of course. Inch. Nobody else. My opinion is you start at one and a quarter and you cut back from there until it's right. Like, so it's it actually it 11. Like... We've, we've lost an inch. It's 11 inches across now. You I say, William. Really that funky bit. That's still good. Still a good size. Oh, it is. I yeah, but that's good 11 good inches you've got. That's, now. A size, that's the size that sells. And as Joe says, that's 11 good inches, and that's much better than 12 bad inches. Yeah. Nice bit of branch inclusion. Yeah, you've got there. rid of all the punky yeah. bits, so that's what counts. Nice bit of branch inclusion just here as well. I think it's gorgeous. Thank Kate you very Kev much, William. K9 says he won't be able to watch You're now. You're very welcome, Brian. There's D. He'll, he'll be in room. It'll be recorded. So, it'll um, be recorded. It'll yeah. be there forever. It'll be, it'll be up forever. You can watch it back. It's on YouTube. So I can stop recording there and uh, bring you guys back in again. Where are you? Lost you. Where are you? Where are you some... Oh, there you are. Patiently waiting. There we go. You're back. 
Oh, and I'll put I'll put myself See, on there. It's only twenty four minutes past yeah. nine, so I've still got oh. six minutes of beer. Left. Well, and I've still got a bit of some tea left. I can't believe that. Nice bitch. No, Roy, I'm it's not Jake going. Joe. I've been left behind. Hey, Brian, everybody, can you? Does, it looks like Joe's got one of your cameras behind her. It does a bit, yeah. He's got one of them flexy light things. Oh, you're on about the lights. Yeah. <laughs> it's what I use for my sewing. So you make smocks as well, then, Joe? No, not that kind of sewing. <laughs> Careful now, Joe. <laughs> Dag, yeah, one, one there. Fine you line there. You, <laughs> we're going to send you the material then. Yeah. Right, yeah. Nice. Can keep it. Go. <laughs> no, you can keep oh, it. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> right, that's that. We're done. That was a great Anybody time, Brian. Well done. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank well done, Brian. Brilliant. Anybody well, got any last well, minute uh, questions or anything they want to ask? In uh, the chat now if you need to or not. Quickly. Thanks everybody well, for coming over and watching, by just, the way. I have some finished really drinking it. this cup of tea. I'm just going to chuck Don't in the link to Steve's um, link. raffle again. Yep, stick that in. Just keep a fresh of Bree's head. Donate. Don't forget, and any of you American friends of ours, um, if you wouldn't mind sharing that out as well, that would be great. So you can get yeah, sure, that would be as far as possible. I, I've got a piece going up on eBay tomorrow. On a 10 day auction that will end at five past nine on the 21st. So cool. it will end during the auction. The intention of that is to share that as far as we can so that we get people from outside the normal yeah. normal list to turn up on the 21st. That's the hope. Zed, Zed has got a premiere. Zed's, Zed's got a premiere. Link in, buddy. You've, got, you've got a spawn, yeah. so stick your link in. It's a new burr plate. He's got go. a premiere Don't tonight, it. tomorrow. Look in, people. Tipsy Turner's just joined us. Yeah, oh, Tipsy. Unfortunately, we're just about you to go. A little bit late, but never mind. Tipsy Turner. You can catch part up. one, you can watch back, and part two is on Thursday. Who's on Thursday? Part, part two, Eight o'clock. Thursday lunchtime, one o'clock. Lunchtime, one o'clock. We'll, we'll turn the inside yeah. of this. I will do this. I've got an appointment on Thursday, yeah. so I, I can't do it Thursday. So it's too nice to be with the Russian. This is asking so, William, does he sell blanks? No, sorry, no, I don't, unfortunately. No. Gives them away. Give them away for free. But you got to go to you got to go to Ireland to get them. You got to go to Ireland to get them, and you got to take you got to take William and his family out for the weekend at your expense, and then he may give you a blank. Yeah. Yeah. The trick is to take William to the pub on a Friday night, get him drunk. Friday night. There'll be a queue at the gate in the morning. No, we won't tell you where you live. We won't tell him where you live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, did I not put that in the description? Oh dear. No, you didn't. <laughs> Actually, that could be a prize, couldn't it? Really, for the for the yeah, auction yeah. trip to Williams. Yeah. I, I, think I, just, head, yeah. I think you should just leave William alone now because <laughs> taking a trip down to William on the fourth or the fifth of the next month. So this is his super. This is first year yeah, worming, yeah. people. So get used to it. It's first year worming. <laughs> and we're not giving him anything. Know. He'll be back. Right, I'll guys. Let you know a little done. secret. That piece you have on the lead. He's got 20 brothers on my shelf here behind me. <laughs> I, knew, I knew you would say that. <laughs> Don't be jealous, chat. Don't be jealous. Oh. Don't be jealous, chat. I did we get that one, yeah. You press the wrong button. I'm very fortunate. Sorry, most of my most of my buddies are tree surgeons, so. There you go. Right. Ah. Excellent. That's where he gets his wood from, guys. Nice. Anyway, we're I'm the next tree surgeon. And you, okay, okay, fair enough. So nice for you, to, nice for you to come along, William, and and uh, help us out. It is brilliant. Right. Oh, That's, uh, excellent. Yeah. Glad for the invite. Glad for the Coming invite. Back on are, you, are you able to come back on Thursday? I yes, can't do sure. Thursday. Yeah. But, uh, it's, a it's a lunchtime event on Thursday. So one o'clock. Yeah. I'm Super. sure Terry will be there. I'll be there. And uh, Joe, have you, have you available Thursday? No, there you go. Joe will be there. Oh, Joe's going to sing again. I might oh, not make it. Uh, a notification came up. Wayne's got a premiere in 30 minutes. He has. Right. So we can pop up and see Wayne as well, guys. What day is this? Monday. So we've got Andy Tuesday, tomorrow at lunchtime. And Andy lunchtime tomorrow. Wednesday is Wayne again, I think, isn't it? There might even be one from Mark on Wednesday. I'm not sure. Oh, lunchtime. Possible. Might be, yeah. possibly. Wayne on, on Wednesday evening. And then back to me again on Thursday. And then we're on into the weekend, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we'll tell you about it on Thursday. Okay, I've guys. New, Brian, I've got a new cooker coming sometime between 10 and 
three on Thursday. No, that's okay, mate. No bother if you our cooker fell get apart. Ah. You see, Worms okay. is way out of it. Very no, I'll be there. You'll be here. Ruth can, answer the, Ruth can answer the door. She can sort him out. Yeah. You only have to sign for it. It's not a big deal. You haven't stole it around. Like. Oh, I'm going to get him to put it in. <laughs> exactly. I'm, That's what you need to I'm do. I'm getting new glasses on Thursday, so hopefully I'll be able to cut finials again. Oh, you'll be able to see. Ooh. I'll be able to see where the lathe is, yeah. That's, that's my <laughs> new camera. It's going to be a finial camera. Where's the rations? So I'm going to do yeah, a video using that camera. So, right, we're done. We're in the end of the broadcast right now, guys. So... Uh, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming Bye. in. Appreciate it. Bye. Talk to you later, everyone.